Hello back, it's the camel again, and we are here in Yosemite Valley. It is Saturday. I really hope you guys are enjoying your weekend, and I'm super happy you tuned into uh, my video again, especially to Yosemite Valley. And uh, first of all, before we start talking about what is happening today, I want to say thank you to all of you. Um, the feedback in the last episode really meant a lot to me about the Black Panther habitat. Now, I, I know that I was just kind of poking quickly into the fact that Yosemite was kind of slipping over uh, a little bit um, just because other projects have been in focus, I guess. Um, however, it's, it's still that I put the most time and, and most ideas into this area and this uh, whole idea of Yosemite Valley Zoo. So uh, it's really good to see that you guys are still enthusiastic and happy about it. And that's all that counts. Because I'm really, I'm really looking forward to each and every episode to bring it out to you guys. So sometimes I'm even like, I, I need to hold myself back to not put too many teasers out already. Um, because I, I want to have the reveal in the episode still. Because that's the same for me with other people I do watch. I do want to, I do want to really see the things happening. And this is why I sometimes like the tour format quite a bit. Because I do, de you know, I, I do discover what they did. But... Sometimes I need my time lapse, and again, just to follow up on what I was talking about last time, uh, I'm, I'm not going to change my time lapse approach at all. I just wanted to know and get a glimpse of what you guys think, what what you guys are up to, if you guys um, like this more or not. And I think there is still a very split audience. Uh, I think some people might like the tour more, some others might like the uh, time lapses more. But overall, I think. Uh, it's kind of a yes or no. It's not like that you say, yeah, I don't care, both is nice. It's like people do enjoy the one more than the other. But I think it's cool to have both on the channel. And um, as for Yosemite, I think I'm going to establish exactly this. So in case you are not willing to watch the time lapse now, you can skip forward to like 16-ish and a half minutes um, where the real-time part uh, starts of today's episode. So in case you want to see that one. For the other one, stick around. We're going to talk you through this wonderful build. And I'm going to say it is wonderful, even though it was hilarious and absolutely freaking shit for me. <laughs> like, it was really tedious. That was the... I, like, I love the work in the dome, but it's... Oh, my God. I, it is such a tedious work because you can see already I'm going to build this um, archway, which is, in fact, connecting one dome with the other. And we do have to do it another time, which I'm not, like looking forward to at all because it as you can see it is quite a lot of work to make it look good and to make it look interesting and to still manage to cover up the ugly edges where the dome connects without even make it feel out of place and I, I did do change this really a lot of times and I didn't even show you my very poor attempt at the very beginning uh, before I went with the final design I completely left them out now, one big shout out um, to one other project I was looking, uh, I was watching recently, I should say. It is Pilosa Sue, and I'm gonna drop a link in the description down below. Um, it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's a very cool project, and um, the zoo is absolutely inspiring. And there are a few things I might wanna, I wanna steal uh, for the future. I'm not gonna, uh, no, I'm not, not gonna steal it, but I'm, I'm taking inspiration from it. Okay, so that's how you call it. <laughs> no, but I, I really think you guys should check it out. Um, again, I put it in the link in the description, uh, as there will be also another link which we're going to talk about a bit later in this episode. Um, but now let's continue our talk about the dome. Now, as you've seen, the major archway is done, um, but I still had something uh, that was poking me quite a bit in the in the couple last days while I was doing the panther habitat. Um, I was always going back to the dome, and I was, I think, I was the whole time knowing that already, but I, I felt it also, that the dome is missing a proper footer. Um, there was no real foundation to the dome that would necessarily be there because otherwise the dome would be totally under supported and there's like no chance that glass would just go into straight into the bottom like without having some kind of concrete or whatever asphalt tarmac or whatever there is to hold it but you definitely needed something uh, to make sure that is and main reason why I needed to put it in anyways was that I needed to sink the dome in. I think for those of you who have seen the lady designer's uh, tropical dome built in her city zoo, they will know that this is a really great trick to make this whole thing appear bigger than it actually is. Because uh, the moment you sink the whole uh, area in, you're gonna get some more space towards the top. And some of the trees are 
pretty high and pretty um, uh, pretty big in terms of their overall size and, and how much they spread to the left and to the right and you know the, the overall radius is also quite uh, big and so what you want to have is obviously you want to have the widest area of the dome on the level where you would pe potentially have the crown of your tree. Now that's, that's what I was doing. Um, and then I, I ran into the issue that I still wanted to have a, an underwater viewing for uh, the pygmy hippo which is the animal of our day um, of today's episode. Um, I think that was one of the, the most voted animals for this dome anyways in the comments so uh, I think people should be happy with this addition. Also as I said I needed to make this tank over here. The tank design really helped me to bring the animal up into a perspective that people could have an underwater viewing without making it feel out of place because if I would have gone that deep into the ground to make sure that people see it I would actually like totally run into the issue that this whole slope is way too steep for the people to go down. Like we will do, uh, we will have a staircase in the end which is still a bit deep and a bit steep uh, but there is no way around it. I, I gotta have to admit that at some point I'm just sick of, of the the slopes that you know the game offers with the stairs. Like there's you know when you build a stair there is a stair and you, you can get rid of this by using the newly um, edited options uh, edit options in the latest patch um, where they you know where you can basically uh, have a half meter step to go down it's still very finicky and in some places you you just do not have the control to make it really look exactly like you want to have it and honestly I don't want to spend that much time on it here. I, I will do this in the future in Koali and maybe also in my Sky Gardens just because it's a bit of a smaller scope. But I don't want to, you know, I don't want to unnecessarily slow the progress of Yosemite down by just looking into one staircase that might potentially need, let's say, two degrees less of an angle. And I think, you know, there might be some people within you guys in the comments that are totally, totally sucking these realistic elements and let me just tell you there will be one of the things that might uh, make you satisfy at the end of this episode not about stairs but something else and I think I'm gonna just keep adding very realistic elements uh, whenever I can but some of the things and this is by the way the, the stair I was talking about as you can see I was trying to get a bit of a better shape in and it's you know it is very much on the verge of being okay-ish but it's it's not however uh, it, it's kind of it is the way it is and I don't want to stress it even more now because it, the the path tool has always been a little bit of an, a tricky thing to do and again uh, either way you're so much into it that you do spend the time or you're just like me now and just like don't let it block your creativity and just leave it as it is and just go with it if you are somewhat happy and that's what I will do with this over here certainly. And I'm just going for uh, really the progress of the dome and maybe who knows at the very end of the dome I might have the patience. To look back into it and just make it look better that's that's the target i i do still have but i think it like you know you will see at the end when we do the real time part it kind of embeds nicely uh yes in, indeed it is a steep little staircase over here but it still does embed nicely into the overall environment and then it was time to bring in our little friends the pygmy hippo which is not the pigeon hippo just gonna say that because that was my weird pronunciation at the very beginning and uh, since then we have this everlasting meme in my channel that I am the Mexican camel that likes pigeon hippos quite a bit and uh, someone the little someone called uh, useless idea has created a, 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 pig, a pigeon hippo image um, and I still remember that I was lying on my floor crying for an hour of laughter because that was just too hilarious and yeah that, that's kind of the backstory story for those of you who don't know but it's the pygmy hippo it's not the pigeon hippo even though I would like to see a pigeon hippo at some time in real life <laughs> it's not it's uh, just forget what I just said okay just forget it never happened but yeah we are um going into a bit more of uh, the actual work that has to be done and before we talk about the foliage in here I just want to stress one point which is very important also for you to understand the scope of the next upcoming episodes like the one thing that is really interesting about these builds is that it takes a long time to get into it with the layout of the path thing with the layout of the habitat where you want to have certain elements of it where where is the 
you know, where is the recreation area going? Where is the shelter going? Where is the where's the actual pond going? Where is, you know, I'm, I'm really thinking where I put these things to not only make it look nice, but also make sure that the animal is traversing through the, uh, through the habitat quite a bit. So there are a lot of things you need to consider. And this takes time. And after you have basically the the main setup of the habitat, the progress is so much quicker. And you will even see that in the habitat, like over half of the time lapse has gone into the basic layout. And just like, I think it's just one third of the time lapse is like the, is basically 90% of the progress. It's insane. I, I love how this works every now and then, but it's just interesting to talk about that as well. You can really tell that now uh, things are going to start to shape up and it's really cool. And I'm, I'm a big fan of this seeing it. And that's one of the main reasons why you will never see solely tours on my channel. Because for me personally, and it's always been that way, I really do like the time lapses for myself, just for me personally. Like I, I, I always keep telling the story that my very first moment I uh, I got in connect uh, connection with Frontier when I didn't even have had a YouTube channel. Um, they asked me if, if I have some images or if I can send the save file and for some awkward reasons I even had a, a footage of it because I used to record my stuff even before I was doing YouTube. I was just recording it for myself. Like I know it might be even more awkward now and it might be very strange uh, and looking back at it it's pretty much weird it is but I just like to s just throw that into the VLC player and just just like play on eight times speed and just see things happening. I did this especially with Minecraft back then uh, to see how things developed in Minecraft. And um, when I started playing Planet Coaster Alpha back then, I still did this uh, just out of a, an old habit. Uh, and I'm just very happy that this happened. But this is also mainly the reason I still drag a lot of satisfaction out of out of these time lapses because looking how it unfolds, looking how it is, it really does make me smile and make, makes me happy because you know what kind of process that was. And, you know, I, you do remember every second of the time uh, that you have spent in there. I exactly know which song I listened to exactly in the moment where I placed down this waterfall enrichment item. I do know whom I was talking to. In fact, this episode was, again, one of the episodes where I was talking to the lady designer the whole evening. She was building, I was building, and then we just do some shit talk and uh, shit chatting and, you know, just do some, some fun stuff. And uh, while while doing this, uh, I'm, I'm just like very productive in, in playing. Uh, so is she, and that's pretty helpful. Now, yeah, that said, you can see that at the end, I'm already planning ahead in what comes into the next domes. And uh, as for that, the next episodes will be a bit more filled with more animals, potentially, because I have the flow of this dome now. I know exactly where it should go, what has to be done and what is in there and what comes in there. Now, um, yeah, despite the animals, which I still need your feedback, but I'm still a big fan of how this all turned out. And you can see now this is filling in the gaps. Um, I wanted to have this waterfall feature in here, especially to make sure that the pond is on eye level with the people when they come into the dome. But once they go down to the water viewing, they basically get into the lower level of the overall dome. And that is where they mainly will stay for the rest of the tour. And uh, talking of tour, I still haven't decided where the exit of this dome will be. I am still opting for uh, a very close connection to the uh, to the Jaguar habitat so that we do go out and then just have a little bit of a more, uh, a more natural flowing pathway that is leading into the Jaguar habitat. So then we do have some more space to build like a more natural habitat uh, right behind the domes that is connecting the domes with the bridge that is leading over the Jaguar habitat. We did in the last episode. Now, in case you haven't seen that, uh, make sure to check that out because, uh, you know, you guys loved it, but I also do love it. The Jaguar habitat just turned out fantastic. Uh, I didn't know it, it was so well working with the let's say Yosemite theme. I want to call it Yosemite theme. It wasn't jungle. It was definitely just Yosemite inspired. And I just really, I'm happy that it worked. Now back to our pygmies. I, I really do like that they seem to have a very, very easy approach of the traversable area. They're really easy on it. Like they have, they seem to have no big deal of traversing any kind of rocks and stuff. So that was really helpful. And that was really good. And um, yeah, now the last bit I'm adding is 
pretty much one of these two things I was adding for the realism lovers uh, within uh, you guys. Now, this is going to be like a little double door gate, which is uh, mainly here to make sure that the airflow and humidity that is potentially inside of the dome uh, is not lost by people going in. So what you have is like a, a double gate system which uh, gets you in and then there, there is some kind of change in temperature and humidity and then once you're in the door closes behind you the next one opens and the same goes uh, again so that you you know it's it's just for maintaining the energy that is in the dome whether it's be the humidity or the temperature but you know you can imagine that especially in winter times it's it's going to be very cold outside and uh, therefore it's you know there's a lot of energy needed to bring all the humidity and the heat into the dome and you don't want to lose all of the energy again while people exit and enter the dome so that's why this thing is done there is a specific name for it which i totally forgot about right now um, i think it's double double gate but there is there is definitely a more a suitable name for it which I totally forgot now but you will tell me in the comments I'm quite sure about that so please do now that's been it about my time lapse I really hope you enjoy the wonderful little tour now and there's a bit more information about what I did in there so enjoy that one and now it's time for the cut Alrighty, as promised, we are in the real-time part. Now, as we've talked a lot about uh, the progress in, in today's episode and the dome itself and blah, 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 um, we are finally in the game, and I think I haven't actually uh, unpaused the game. There we go. Um, frame rate dropped a little bit back to 50-ish, which is which is still fine. Um, so that is totally fine. Now, um, I, I gotta say, I'm still amazed that I uh, do find staff members that are not named Tajit Cam yet. But uh, we will get there. We will get there in the future. Before we go into the dome, here are s uh, two things I actually added. I, I'm not really sure if they are in the time lapse. I'm I'm quite sure they are not. Um, so first of all, I did add a little bit of foliage that suit uh, the environment a bit more. Um, also to make sure that the domes blend in a little bit better already. And uh, now I do want to make them uh, blend in with the whole environment later on way more. I just want to have some kind of areas where it is a bit more open so that you can see the domes. But then again, also have some foliage to block them away and just make them sink into the environment. Now. Before we go in, let's just quickly go to the right hand side over here. As you can see, there is um, uh, some cool stuff over here and that is, um, well actually it's kind of a machine that keeps the humidity coming for the inside of the dome. Since that dome is going to be um, ridiculously humid and uh, needs to be hot and warm at all times in order to make this tropical dome work, I um, created this thing and this was hugely inspired by the Eden project that uh, Zekin built last week for his project. In in his cooperation I think it's together with Jash um, and who else was it I don't know I'm gonna link this video down below in the description because it's awesome and I, I can only highly recommend to watch that but they also use these kind of things however as you know me I only want to you know use stuff in this particular project I made myself so I made these things myself again and I made my own design and holy crap I decided to go for these um, pipe designs i think you guys know them these are the blow up pipes you only see or you also see them quite often in uh, home air conditioned units um this one is a bit bigger though um and this looks a bit more like these crap things you can really you can the, the cool thing about these is you can really boil them together to a very small plastic ish thing you can put into a luggage or whatever in your car and you just need to drag it out they're very light but they do transfer the humid air quite nicely indeed um, so it's not a static pipe in this kind of sense, it really is this kind of blow thing, so you can also tr make that travel higher. And then I used actually some of the coolers over here um, to have some uh, airflow going out, because the smoke effect, the VFX in the game, is not really the, the best uh, to use here. It's a bit too big and too heavy, uh, at least for my taste, so I have uh, that one. Now we also do have a bit of a, a heating going on down here. You can see there is some hot air coming out here and I put some heaters in in order to make this little nice heat effect. Um, but yeah, so this is what I've hidden in here. And again, this might be uh, used a few more times around the dome. However, it's kind of an FPS killer because all these little things are switches, so light switches. Um, so this, this, this thing has, how many pieces even does it have? 
Yeah, well, that thing contains 2,000 pieces. Um, that's not great. Not great at all. Uh, so maybe I'm not going to copy that around more than once. Uh, but yeah, well, if we go in, I also made this little double door gate. So we have some coolers in the front here to make sure that um, the air conditioning is going to be working well. And then you come into this second room, uh, which then has the heaters in to create this uh, more humid and warm environment. Then you go in to make sure that, uh, you know, you don't have the loss of energy. Now, that is then uh, entering the dome and I did do a bit more of foliage work. I was asking the lady and Sylph when we were doing the quality recording uh, if they just want to jump in quickly into my build and just show them to, to them and they were like, hey, mate, you just need to add even more foliage and so I did. Uh, now we have a lot more foliage in this habitat. Now. I talked a lot about the idea already, so we don't need to talk too much about the layout, but you can really tell from the viewpoint that it does work quite nice. You have um, the sunken habitat creates an even more spacious uh, appeal to it, so it looks a lot more bigger than um, it actually is because it's sunken and it appears even higher and stuff. So yeah, you can have a nice look into the habitat, uh, but still the animals have some privacy below the bridge which is kind of cool. And then to the left hand side, you have a slight little peek of the backstage area, but it is mostly hidden at all spaces. So actually I put the tree in front so you can see it. Uh, I was just actually bugging in here. Yeah, no, so um, that it is actually hidden. And then we go here, you have the waterfall on the right hand side. Oh, there's a hippo standing here. Look, they have pygmy hippo uh, just standing here. So they use all the spaces. The traversal area is all fine. It's not, not really a big deal. Um, for them and so yeah if we just uh, go further we can just go down the staircase over here so this will be as I said um, that will be the area for capuchin monkeys and some other animals in here as well uh, I guess this dome is for the Nile monitor and the capuchin monkeys I'm not really sure how I will do this but um, there is enough space here to do it uh, I will definitely find I will definitely find a way of doing it now yeah you can see this is an open little river down here um, but the animals cannot go through because of the elephant grass, so it's a kind of a natural border. And then over here you have the underwater viewing uh, for the pygmy hippos in case they decide to go underwater, which they in fact don't really do that often. Uh, I kept the game running for quite a long time, but yeah, you, you have this wonderful view over here, which I... I totally dig with the wonderful build in the background of the of the dome shape and then yeah it kind of really all ties together now it really looks gorgeous and yeah I, I'm really a big fan of it I really hope that you guys do like it as well uh, and that you find it as amazing as I do now let me just take that little little road here into the habitat so you can really see it from the inside so this is how it unfolds on the lower end of it basically the area that the guests cannot see i just basically uh, slapped some backstage area in uh, where is it there you go uh, it's basically here it's, it's not major it's not done yet it's just here to make sure that it's blocked away these people not really have anything to do it's just the keeper um so oh yeah we will now see the animals move because uh, that dude is bringing some some good food. Now, I really hope that the animal is coming in. I have the feeling that one of the two is actually, oh no, was it in the water? It was in the water, but I love that they're just coming to run towards the water. I just love that. It's so cool. Uh, towards the food, I must say. Uh, oh, well, the other one just doesn't want to, but that one is just coming over. Mm, yum, 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 yum. Roar. Well, yeah, what do we have to? Just eat something, okay? Don't complain. There is some food for ya. There is some food for you. Where's the other one? There's the other one. You can just come around here. Come on. Get your piece of the food before your mate just ate it all. Just going around here as well. You could have just easily taken the other route as well. Where are you stuck? Are you stuck somewhere? Or where are you? Hello? Hello? -ho. Oh well, maybe not hungry. But yeah, you can see this is this is how the overall habitat did really unfold. And uh, we have some of the waterfall enrichment in here. I thought it was a cool idea to have it in the bridge. Um, it didn't work over there with the waterfall, which is a bit unfortunate. I wanted to have it there, but it didn't work. But yeah, so you have a bit of, as I, as I said, a chill down area down here. Um, they do use it, which I like quite a bit. Um, excuse me. Well, thank you, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so this is the pygmy habitat, a uh, pygmy hippo habitat, I should say. And um, this is the dome build so far. I really, again, as I said, I really hope you dig it as well as I do. And uh, yeah, let me know your suggestions in the comments down below about what else we need to bring in here and we could bring in here what you would love to see. And uh, yeah, so let me know. And until then, 
Have a wonderful Saturday, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.